What's up? My name is Zeb and I'm the host of My Highway Podcast, sponsored by Regions Bank. So today I'm getting to sit down with Matt Overton. And for most of you who know sports, Matt is a great NFL player who has played for multiple teams over the past years. We get to talk about his journey and the adversity that he's faced trying to stay in the NFL and in the league. Matt, I know you're not going to talk about yourself, so I'm going to brag on you for a minute. You played with the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Seattle Seahawks, Los Angeles Chargers, and most recently the Tennessee Titans. Matt recently signed on to play long snapper for the Tennessee Titans, and we met because we have the same trainer in Nashville. It's really cool to get to dive in because you guys will learn in the podcast, Matt has a connection to music, and I'm excited to learn more about his journey with the NFL and how he's got to where he's at in Nashville. All right, well, Matt, thank you for letting us come in your house and take over today. I know I was really excited to do this. Uh, when, when I started the podcast, I really wanted to um, share stories not only with music artists, but with sports players and entertainment people as well, because I think that for people listening to hear someone's story of how they got from point A to point B and the struggles that they've taken to get there, I think motivates them and gives them a lot of... Um, encouragement to try harder and work harder in their own life so thank you for letting us come in yeah and crash no today. thanks coming over and making yourself at, at home and uh glad it all worked out and it's really good to finally meet you yeah too. you too yeah. um for everyone who's listening uh how i got to know matt is because i work out with jay todd uh jay todd performance who trains matt and as you can tell uh He's, he's a lot more successful at working out than I am, but uh, we both do it, and it's been great. So um, It's part of my job, though. So Shout out to Jay Todd for yeah, making this connection. Yeah, absolutely. That's my guy. Uh, Matt, if you just want to start by telling me, um, you know, I'm learning just as much as a listener today, so just where you're from and uh, how you grew up and how you fell into sports and that your journey. Yeah, so I'm originally from California, the East Bay Area, so just east of San Francisco, my uh the overton side of the family is all from there and so uh born in san leandro california which is just right next to oakland i uh, lived there for a few years and then uh, my dad uh, and my mom moved us to tracy california which is a small little farm town and a lot of people don't believe me when i say farm town california but there's there's a ton central california in the valley is, is all agricultural and so Grew up in a little uh, ag town, and uh, Tracy is just, it's more south of Sacramento by about an hour or so, and um, so my mom's side is from Seattle, and uh, spent a lot of time in Seattle growing up as well, so the Pacific Northwest is is home to me, and I eventually went to college there, but grew up in Tracy my entire life for the most part, up until uh, leaving for college, and um you know, football really was in my blood from um, from the from the get go. My grandfather, my mom's dad, um, was a head football coach in college when I was uh, growing up. So he had about thirty years of of coaching, and um, so my mom is one of three daughters of a of a head coach. So football, man, was uh, as 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 young as I remember. I mean, I was throwing the ball around, playing catch. And I always had the dream of aspiration of, you know, playing college football, playing in the NFL. My dad played college ball. My cousin played college ball. So there was a, there was a lot of uh, history within our family with, with football in particular. And then again, my mom being a, a daughter of a head football coach, she was like, as soon as I could sign up for organized football and Pop Warner, she, she got me signed up. I think I was seven. And, um, I'll never forget. I was running around the hallway of the house and I think my mom yelled, Hey, I'm signing you up for football this summer. And I, at the time just kind of shrugged it off. And, you know, at at that age, you know, I didn't really understand how, (laughs) how brutal it was going to be because central California in the summertime, it's over hundred degrees. It's hot. You know, it, it, it's demanding at the time. There was only one, um, Pop Warner team in my town and it was, it was the best, one of the best teams in the area. So the Tracy Raiders, man, the history was is, is crazy, very competitive. And I went out my first year trying out, and I ended up not making the team. And uh, I remember crying, and and just I was I was the last little p- 
pick of the litter on the field that was left. And, and if you didn't get your name called, you didn't make the team. And uh, I just remember crying. And, and that was my first taste of football. I'm like, this is, nah, I'm, this is, I'm good, you know. How old were you? I was How seven. Dang. Yeah. So at seven years old, these coaches told me <laughs> I, I sucked and go home, come back next year. Good luck, you know. But, you know, my mom, my mom was determined. I got I to gotta give it to her because, uh, you know, she was the one that wanted me to play badly. So um, she found another team. Uh, in Manteca, California, which is uh, I don't know about 20 minutes from where we lived, and and this team, the Delta Rebels, is what their name was, was the team that kind of brought in everybody that was getting cut from other teams. So played for the Delta Rebels, but it was hard because you know at the time my parents were separated, my mom was being you know uh, working multiple jobs, and and uh, so I had a carpool with friends and other guys in Tracy that were commuting out to that team. And, and so I just remember the sacrifice that my mom made was incredible because, you know, she couldn't make it all the time, but she would be, she would meet every game and she'd be there late to pick me up from practice. And my dad would commute, you know, he's a police officer, so he's working crazy hours and he would drive out to uh, every game. And, but uh, the next year made the Tracy Raiders and, and played up until high school there. And, we won the Super Bowl twice, so uh, you know it, it was a lot of fun. But um, high school went to Tracy High School, and and you know in between football, you know I played baseball and got into golf. You know, kind of when Tiger Woods came into the scene, and and uh, you know got really really got into golf. Um, played on the high school team as a freshman, and um, played baseball. Did a little track and field, but football was always my passion, and so I really kind of shoved every other sport to the side and really focused on football and uh, definitely determined to get a scholarship. And at the time, you know, my dream was always to go to uh, Notre Dame. And um, my grandfather played at University of Washington, uh, the Huskies. And so uh, my second choice would be UW. And um, but, uh, you know, wasn't big enough, wasn't fast enough. You know, I, I, I was really good um, on, a, on a very average team. And so no scholarships, you know, and uh, I played offensive line and defensive line linebacker and I was undersized, you know. So, you know, I knew realistically that uh, getting a scholarship to a big school was probably not in not in the works for me. And um, but I did have a little special gift called long snapping (laughs) that a coach uh, just made me do uh, my freshman year in high school. And um, I remember one day after practice, you know, Hey, you know, if anybody can kick, punt, or long snap, stay after practice. We got we to see who can get out here and, and make this thing work. So I stuck around because I played center. Yeah. The coach was like, "Hey, you're the center. I'll, you know, you kind of have a natural ability with snapping the ball anyway. Maybe give this long snapping thing a try." And and I don't really remember, but I, I guess I was the only one that could do it pretty well. And I snapped all the way through high school. So leading up to my senior year. You know, I was a two-way starter. I was uh, I long snapped. Again, I don't really remember doing it, but I know I did it um, just because I really wasn't focused at that position. Uh, and I really didn't understand um, how valuable that skill was for me moving on. And so when it came to, like, looking at schools and, and seeing if there's opportunities for a scholarship anywhere, um, it really wasn't working out. But when I started – promote myself as a long snapper that's when teams or schools were like oh you know maybe you know maybe that's your route so I ended up going to junior college first you know for people who are listening JUCO in California is huge and it's it's the last chance you on Netflix that's what it is it's it's a community college and it's an opportunity for guys who really don't get scholarships to go play and get the exposure and, and play at a higher level so um, that was really beneficial to me. I played uh, on a really good team from a lot of, uh, with a lot of kids, and a lot of top talent from the Bay Area. And so, um, you know, playing when I was in that, in Tracy, we weren't really known for speed. So when I started playing against, you know, guys in the Bay Area, that's where all the speed was, you know. So uh, playing against that competition was really, really good and it helped me. So Again, I got exposure. Again, I was long snapping just kept coming up. These coaches were like, hey, man, you really got to pursue this. And um, especially if you want to get a scholarship and if you have aspirations of playing in the NFL, I mean, this is your golden ticket, too. And so I really started working on my craft and started, you know, really paying attention to it, going to um, summer camps for it and everything. And it's really a self-taught skill. Um, it's not like picking up a guitar and, and going to a teacher and, and 
learning chords and all that kind of stuff. No, nah, this is this is at the time, um, you know, this is early two thousands, mid two, you know, two thousand five ish, two thousand six, where um, YouTube was coming out. So I was starting to like watch videos of what guys are doing, how guys are training for this. Um, there was camps every now and then, but it really wasn't as big as it was now. Now there's ki there's the kids that coming out of high school now have camps, you know, um, every few months, you know, they can go travel around the country and get, you know, top coaching and, and exposure. But, you know, I had to go online and, and search for camps and stuff like that. So um, I had to send my film out. Um, again, this is <laughs> this is not YouTube clips. This is this is like a, hel a handheld uh, yeah. video in my my mom and I put DVDs together and send out portfolios, all that kind of stuff. So um, after my sophomore year at Dabble Valley College, um, I got a scholarship to Western Washington University, so Division II school. And I wanted to go up there because I always wanted to go up to Washington. That's where, you know, my family's at. That's where um, I'd be closer to my grandfather. Um, and so um, took the took the opportunity at Division II Western Washington. And it was the best opportunity for me because they were allowing me to long snap and play defensive end. So uh, that's really what I wanted to do. Um, nice. So really, to we'll, we'll get into the whole NFL journey, but really leading up to the opportunity for NFL, it's like, you know, this is not Alabama. This is not Florida. This yeah. is not USC. This is not, you know, SEC football or whatever. So um, this is Division Two, where guys – who are at the school are there for academics and um you know football is is more of a hobby um but for me you know i've always had that dream and aspiration of the nfl and so even though people thought i was crazy um i said you know i'm determined to make it out of here so i was lucky enough to uh be in a position where the kicker that was leaving the school as i transferred there he was an nfl prospect and i was in class one day when i, I had just transferred up to up there for spring uh semester and I get a text message from the coach saying, hey, can you be on the field in 15 minutes? Because Michael Kanan, he's got his pre-draft workout for the Seahawks. And so I went out there and I long snapped to him for his pre-draft yeah. workout. Michael Kanan went on having nine-year NFL career. He played with the Falcons, played with the Buccaneers. But it was that workout that I was illegally at because NCAA rules, I wasn't supposed to be there. But Again, I'm at a Division II school, so there's yeah. no, there's nobody. NCAA <laughs> no is not. Uh, yeah, no one's watching. But that uh, that workout in front of those scouts, that's what got my name on the radar. So when I was when I came out in 2007 for my draft year, the Seahawks brought me in as a um, wow. as a free agent for long snapping, and that was that, again that was uh, that was my first taste of NFL. And they say the NFL acronym is not for long, and it's true. I lasted three days. <laughs> after my first NFL camp. So I was there for three days, didn't do very well. It was kind of over my head. I was overwhelmed. I was starstruck. I was just not mentally prepared. Yeah. And it really physically too. I mean, again, um, division two school, you're not, you're not really prepped yeah. for pro after that. It's, it's you, you play there, you graduate, you're done. Yeah. So I had a lot of learning, man. A lot of, uh, I uh, sought out a lot of coaching, a lot of, uh, you know, mentoring from guys that were, at the pro level. Um, and so between 2007 and 2009, I, you know, ended up going, I played the, in, the, in the arena league. Um, I played in the United football league, which is a uh, equivalent to what the XFL is kind of now. Um, it's a minor league and I played, ended up, uh, playing, uh, really, really well. And, you know, now that I'm here in Tennessee with the Titans, Jim Hazlitt is the linebackers coach here, but he was my head coach. Uh, for the Florida Tusker team in the UFL. So that was 10 that's years ago. Crazy. So that's crazy, yeah. But anyway, that was the opportunity that I needed to to prepare myself um, for the NFL. And again, the Seahawks brought me in again after that season. And long story short, you know, my first NFL season was, uh, by the grace of God, brought me to Indianapolis. And I signed with the Colts. Um, and I made it the team that year in 2012. And... Uh, so it took me it took me six years after college to finally play in my first NFL game. Wow! And so uh, there was a, a between, you know, my last college game and my first NFL game. There was many times where I was about to give up and quit, um, hang it up, go pursue another career. And uh, thankfully, I had people around me who saw something in me 
that just you know, said, hey, keep going. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. You got the talent. You got the ability. You just need another opportunity or you need to be in the right position. Um, and I just kept my faith high and, and just kept going, man. And uh, it's crazy to look back on that. Yeah, I know. mean, that's a that's an insane yeah. – I mean, you just spilled the whole story from top to bottom. I mean, there, there's but, a lot that goes into that. And that's 2012. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're – you know, that was eight years ago. And I'm still sitting here today with I, – I still am blessed to play in the NFL. Um, and I spent uh, five years with the Colts, two and a half years, three years with the uh, Jaguars, a little bit with the Chargers, and now I'm here in, 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 with the Titans. And, you know, I'm 35 years old, and I never would have thought that I'd be playing a, a kid's game at this age or I'd have, you know, a, a nine-year NFL career. Yeah, and it's a blessing, man. And so, if I can share my testimony with other young athletes or or people who are pursuing their dream and, and are taking the the long way to get there, I mean, I, let my testimony be uh, um, just some, some words of advice and 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 give you the motivation to keep going. Well, and that's exactly why I wanted you, you know, you on the podcast first for me for as players because looking at your determination over that time frame I mean 90% of people would have given up or did other stuff and you have yeah. I mean that's what I was going to ask you is going back to college like what what were you actually going to school for where was it ever in your mind <laughs> to be like okay if this doesn't work out this is what I'm going to do yeah I mean I had a I have a passion for health and fitness so I wanted to go and do some you know human fizz or uh, get a degree and and something related to health and fitness and I'm not the most uh, studious person or disciplined uh, guy when it comes to studying and to stay on top of that kind of stuff. So when I found out that my uh, the, the toughest courses for that major were only given during football season, I tapped out. I said, no, that ain't for me. And so I, I, I ended up going general studies, which is, I mean, it's really a made up degree. I got to study whatever I wanted to as long as I made up certain credits in different areas. So, I mean, I did a lot of history stuff, a lot of educational stuff. Um, I did a lot of health stuff, too, just to kind of uh, stay in something that interested me. But I was there for football. I mean, football was my main thing. So, uh, again, I, I I was still determined to get, get a, a degree because that's why I was there. Man, it's important, too, you know. Yeah. And so um, graduated um, in 2008. And uh, so when football was kind of on the – on the hold, I came back and did summer school. And, and at that time I was not on scholarship anymore. So I'm paying out of state tuition. So my, my parents are like, you better get done as soon as possible. <laughs> so that's why I changed I my degree because I went into a, a counselor and I said, what is the easiest way and quickest way for me to get a degree with all the credits I have? And I said, general, general studies. I'm like, done, let's go. And yeah. I think it took me, you know, 15 credits away from it. So nice. I was done. And, um, yeah, so I, I mean, if it wasn't for football, I mean, I, I would probably be in the health, fitness, coaching. Um, I really probably would be a police officer, to be honest with you. Um, my, my family is a big law enforcement family. My dad's a retired captain. My brother is currently active. Um, a lot of my uncles, cousins, best friends are all law enforcement back in California. So it, it's probably that would probably be something I would uh, would have pursued. Um, yeah. So and then. Um, I've always had aspirations of being a, a country music star too. So maybe I do that on the side. And <laughs> yeah, so I'm glad you opened that door. No, so we're going to jump forward a little bit. But um, for those of you listening, Matt knows a ton about country music. We were talking about it ahead of time. Um, but one thing that I did notice and I didn't realize until I started preparing for our podcast today was that you actually have interned here in Nashville with Bobby Bones. So yeah. talk about that. How did that happen? I know it's been you know, during one of your breaks, but just how did that come about? How did you make that relationship? And yeah, how so was that? I got to give credit to um, my buddy AC back in Indianapolis. So when I was playing for the Colts, I did a lot of radio stuff. I was doing country radio, um, a fill in, um, doing cool little segments with uh, one of the local stations there. And um, actually one, they, they took me out to the ACMs one year in Vegas and that was a lot of fun. So I got to do Radio Row. I got to be involved in the interview process. And so I met I met a ton of, uh, I mean, the elite of the elite in, in country music. So um, that was really something I, I enjoyed. I, I, I like doing radio. Um, but at the time, when I started doing sports radio, especially in-season, 
I, I started to, I started to get really uncomfortable because I didn't want to talk about my peers. I don't want to talk about the season if we were having a bad season or a bad loss. If I wasn't playing well, I didn't want to talk about it. So when I started doing country radio, even though at the time I wasn't like a huge country fan, um, I still gravitated to it because it was an outlet for me yeah. where I didn't have to talk about, I could talk about sports and I could bring that value to a, a morning show, but it wasn't all sports. And again, I don't watch a lot of sports on TV, so I'm not really current on baseball, basketball, um, even all around the NFL. You know, I try to release myself from that scene as much as I can because I'm consumed with it so much. So at the time I was doing some, um, uh, I did like a fill in uh, player analyst thing after game with uh, my buddy AC for one of the news ch uh, channels. And uh, he's, he's friends with, uh, Andy Roderick, the tennis player. And so he said, hey, you know what? I got to connect you with a guy down in Nashville. He just moved there. He's got a morning show. His name's Bobby Bones. And at the time, I didn't, I didn't know who he was. And this is really early on, I think 2014 or something like that, um, when Bobby first moved here. And so I connected with him. I came down here on a bye week, and I spent a few days down here and went over to Bobby's studio um, and just was a, a guest on their, on, their, on their morning show one morning. And from there, just really kind of uh, sparked a relationship with not just him, but everybody on the show, um, from Amy to, to Eddie and Lunchbox and, and Ray. And um, so one off season or, or leading up to an off season, I reached out to Bobby. I said, hey, you know, I really want to utilize some time now that I'm moving to Nashville in the off season, maybe finding an internship. So at the time, you know, I was applying for like CMT and, and really, but like really structured corporate style yeah. like internships. And the more I learned, looked into the internships, I'm like, I, this is my off season. I do, really don't want to go a nine to five internship where it's like really structured. And uh, it's, I mean, the experience would be great, but I just don't think I can give my time and energy because I got, I got to go see my family. I got to, yeah. I got to rest a little bit. So Bobby was, hey, man, just come talk to me. We'll, we'll figure it out. So I went in and one day and he said, listen, we don't have an internship program, you know, but uh, just come in when you want, you know, fill That's in. So crazy. Just just sit in and see kind of how we, we kind of the morning show functions. So I would, I would go in at 530 in the morning and sit in with the, you know, on the producing side and, and, uh, kind of the, the glass box that they would call it and their glass room and, and be with, you know, kind of behind the scenes, you know, seeing how things are, are moving and how things work and answering the phone for callers and doing, <laughs> doing little stuff like that. And, you know, I, I spent, you know, uh, I was, I mean, I wasn't there, every single day for two and a half months, but I came in pretty darn consistently and just taking notes and just evaluating. And, and, you know, I, again, I have a personal relationship with them, so it's fun. Um, and then over time, Bobby just said, Hey man, pitch, pitch some skits and, and some bits for the show. And, you know, so I'd submit it on, you know, the, the night before, and sometimes it, Bobby would let me do it and bring me on the air a little more. Um, and then this is around the time where Bobby was doing a podcast. And again, this is kind of like when podcasting really started taking off. And so he brought me on his podcast. I'm like, this is cool too, man. I want to learn how to podcast. And so Bobby's been really, really good to me. And, um, again, I have a, a great relationship with a lot of those guys. And, um, so it, it's just, and as Bobby has continued to, to grow in his yeah. career and American Idol and, and doing a lot of uh, hosting, you know, shows and dancing with the stars. I mean, the dude has been really, really cool to kind of see how he's yeah. carved himself into uh, the scene and, and really being in one of the top, uh, top dogs in his industry, you know? So, um, my hat's off to him, but I learned a lot from just how he, I mean, the dude is incredibly busy, but how to priority prioritize time. And I've learned a lot from the other guys on the show. And, and, uh, so it's been, it's been cool to, to yeah. see kind of how that, that whole show is, has grown to where it's at now. Yeah. And, and like, listening to you talk about that is a huge standout for me, for people who are, you know, trying to better themselves. It's because you're technically a pro in your sport, but mm -hmm. on your off season, you still want to go and learn and do other things and yeah. grow, you know, and I find myself doing that. Like I was telling you before this started, I'm very uncomfortable with doing the podcast thing, but yeah. I know that it's something where I can learn from other people and people who listen can learn. And I feel like once you stop, trying to grow as a person and learn more is when you start to fail because you have to continue to grow. And I know another thing, which I want to back up a minute and dive back into, um, 
the NFL stuff before we go any further with what you've did outside of that. Mm-hmm. But I, for me personally, I would love to know what it's like. You know, you said that you had got in for training with the NFL in, right after college, right? Mm-hmm. So you did the whole draft situation. But what's it like preparing for that type of situation? What what kind of training goes into that? What mental training? Then you don't make it after day three, right? And then you have to go back and reset everything. What did that look like for you? What did you go through? How did you handle that? I mean, f- I mean, first, I just got to just give credit to <laughs> to God for really yeah. opening doors for me and and bringing me across people who really helped me prepare because like I said, I was not mentally, physically, emotionally prepared for the NFL coming out of college. Um, I had the ability. Obviously, I wouldn't have been brought in if I didn't. Um, they saw something in me that, you know, was was a value. Um, but, man, I was just so – I mean, looking at 2007 compared to, like, 2012, a lot of growth happened in those those five years. And even in 2012 with my first NFL season – um, I mean, that was a, that was a crazy time for me. I mean, I was, I was learning how to, you know, be on a tight schedule. Uh, I was learning how to, um, prioritize time with my family and friends and my social life. I was trying, I was, I was now, you know, you're being evaluated every single day. So learning how to deal with that anxiety and that pressure and that stress. Um, and when you don't perform well, like how do you bounce back? Um, and so, finding finding balance between you know your personal life and and your your professional life and um you know surrounding yourself with good people and and that can help you along the way but um i mean just so much has gone into that and i really think it just i sought i i I would seek out help you know i would i would i would be when facebook was like the only main social media outlet that in myspace i mean i was i was sending my film out to pros who I can find. I would just search who's the punter for this team, who's the kicker, who's the snapper for this team. Oh, I'll look them up on Facebook. Oh, there they are. Boom. Hey, here's my. I was sending, that's how I got into the UFL. I was sitting on my couch one one morning, and um, I was watching an NFL game. And I, again, I was I was pro, I was so persistent. I I would send my YouTube videos, my highlight videos out to everybody that I could find, any email I could find, any Facebook. I was just hit, sending it out, and. Um, the punter for the team, Todd Sauerbrunn, I had sent it to him and he sent me a message. I'm like, kid you not, I'm on the computer. I get a message from him and said, Hey, you need to, you need to call our coach now. Cause our long sniper just got hurt in practice today. I'm like, what? Okay. So he sent me his number. <laughs> I called this coach. Al, Al, uh, what's his, Al Roberts, his name. I call this coach and I said, Hey coach, this is Matt Overton. He's like, who is this? I said, this is Matt Overton. I don't know who you are. I'm like, coach, I'm Matt Overton. <laughs> Todd Sauerbrunn just gave me your phone number. I heard your long snapper got hurt in practice. Hey, I'm going to send, I'm sending you film right now. What's your address? What, what do I got to do? So he gave me like a, they were, they're at the team hotel. He's like, overnight this, this DVD to me, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so I'm, I'm scrambling. My mom's helping me. I'm, we're overnighting this DVD package to the team. And, um, I, I do some research on the coach, you know, I try to try to do a little uh, investigating who this person is. So like when I do talk to him, maybe there's something that we can relate to. And I'm not kidding you. This dude played for my grandfather in college. So that's God. <laughs> no, there's nothing but God. So when the wow. next time I talked to Al Roberts on the phone, I said, hey, Al, do you remember Paul Walruff? And there was a pause on the end. You know, it was like he's like. I haven't heard that name in 40 years. I said, well, that's my grandfather. I just see, I saw that you on your uh, bio sheet that you played at UPS. And that's when my grandfather was the head coach there. He's like, it almost like, it, it was like, it was that again, it was nothing but God in that moment. And um, so that connection emotionally and, and personally, like we had, we had a bond and I ended up getting signed and I played under Al Roberts that first year. And, and I mean, just but having that connection with my grandfather, because when I brought up uh, his name to my grandfather, my my grandfather knew everything about him. Oh, he went to this high school, ran this 40. He was, you know, he wore this number. He knew everything about him. And uh, it was just special, man. So really, to answer your question, like I sought out help. I was on Facebook. I was throwing my 
highlight clips to everybody and anybody I could find. And it was through social media that I really, I mean, a lot of guys get discovered right on YouTube or Instagram, whatever it is. And I mean, I got, I got my shot through, through social media just because I was persistent and someone saw my video and liked it. And, and, but that's know. what's so funny about this to me is, you know, I listen to a lot of music artists talk about their stories yeah. and people who are trying to get in the music business or get into the sports business or whatever it might be, you know, and everyone's story is the same. It's persistency and figuring out a way to continue to knock on doors, yeah. even when the opportunity isn't there for you. Yeah. And like so many people want to give up so quick, but mm-hmm. for you to continue to just search people and send stuff and like until that door is open, like that's to me. And I've said this all along, like you don't know this, but you know, I have an ag degree from an, I grew up in an ag family yeah. too. And I have an ag degree and I didn't know that I was going to move here for music. And so I just had a feeling in my gut that this is what I wanted to do. And this is what I loved. And I moved here and I was on musicrow.com every day when I didn't have a job and yeah. I was searching for emails. That's why I was laughing over yeah. here. Cause I would search emails and send my resume and be like, Hey, this is what I'm willing to do. I'll do anything to get in. And it took persistency for me to meet people and do that. So it's crazy to hear that someone in a complete different industry doing something completely different makes the things happen. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where like, uh, I mean, I definitely could have gave up so many times along the way and, but I never felt like in my heart, there was just like, maybe one day I'd be in a funk. I'm like, you know, same for me. And then next day I'd just be the the fire would be back. Like there was just something in me that I never, that flame was there, you know, that spark was there and I just kept going. And, um, and like I said, there's so many people along the way, guys like, like training wise. So I, I, I look for a gym where NFL guys were training at. So I went there, I signed up for that gym and I trained with guys that were in the league. I wanted to be where they're at. So I needed to learn and be around people who were there. Because people that I played with, high, I mean, if you're not on, if you're not around people who have been there or understand the grind or the nature of the business, it's really hard for people to relate or really hard for people to be encouraging and motivating because they just don't know what they don't know. And so I needed to be around people who were there or, or on the same track trying to fight to get there as well. And so, I mean, the group of guys that I trained with, you know, before I even got my foot in the door, I mean, a lot a lot of credit goes to them and and my family for supporting me and, you know, and and there's so many people that I have, um, have to thank. I mean, it's every, every city I've been in every team, there's, there's always a a person or a small group of people who I have, they, they helped me to the next stage, you know? Um, and it's, it's crazy to look back and, and the journey I've been on and, um, it's, it's cool, but yeah, persistent and faith and, and persevering, man, because, Shoot, if I didn't give up, you know, then that's, that's the thing about long snapping is there's only 32 jobs in the, in the world. And maybe there's only three to five legitimate opportunities for competition the next year. So a lot of these guys come out of college. If it doesn't work out the first time around, they're done. Like they give up and rightfully so. Life happens. You need to go provide for your family, you know, get a job. And then some guys just stick it out. And I'm telling the, the guys that stick it out, I'm like, listen, it took me six years. You're on year two out of college. Just keep going. Something's going to break. Yeah. You know, you just got to keep keep going to these camps, keep your name relevant any way you can. And so there's no right or wrong way to get to where you want to go to. Sometimes you just got to you got to go up and over and around the mountain, man. Like you got to do it a couple times before yeah. uh, you reach your destination, man. And, and again, and then when you get to your destination, man, it's even hard. It's that's a whole nother yeah. mindset. It's just it being able to yeah. stay there and stick you know well and that's what you were saying earlier and i'm gonna back up a minute so the first team you played for in the nfl was who indianapolis colts okay so from there you were traded right no no i so i was with the seahawks i signed there but i was only there like in the off season or or training camp and then i was released and then i i played in the united football league for three years which is a minor league so i played in for the florida team and two years for the omaha nighthawk team and so um it was those teams that kind of kept my name relevant. So in NFL terms, I was a free agent all along and uh, the Colts signed me as a free agent in 2012 and uh, competed against their 10 year vet and by the grace of God made the team that year. So what is it like playing for different teams under different coaching? Is it completely different or do you feel like, is there one that you feel 
I mean, how, how is that? And talk about that. I mean, cause I, I guess it would be like in our industry working for different companies, but sure. what's it like yeah. training and playing with yeah, different Yeah. So players? I mean the Colts, you know, they were coming in, it was right after Peyton Manning, Tony Dungy, that whole era was gone. Um, they, they really just, re, you know, bringing a whole new staff, new, new head coach, new GM. So I was part of that big turnover. Um, and at, the, at that time, the Colts were like the winningest, the most winning franchise in a decade. And so, um, I mean, a lot of rich history with that organization. So the coming into it was, you know, winning is, is, is a standard. It's not we hope to win, like we expect to win, right? And not every team's like that, right? So I was fortunate enough to be, you know, we go to the playoffs, you know, three out of the five years that I'm there. AFC Championship, that kind of stuff, always competitive. And then um, I went to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Well, shoot, you know, this is a divisional team, same conference. You know, they don't have the rich history. They don't – they're like one of the worst teams every year. <laughs> So when I got released from the Colts and I was looking at teams that, that potentially could be landing spots, the, the Jaguars were like at the bottom of the, the list. And it wasn't just because they weren't winning. I'm just, I've been to the city. I've played there. Fan base is a little weak. You know, it's, they just, again, they're not, they're not winning. And that's, that's, that's a problem. And so again, man, God stepped in and said, Hey, you're going to Jacksonville. <laughs> So he took me to Jacksonville in 2017, and this is my first time being with another team and seeing how it, it runs and how it's operating. And um, it's not a lot different. It's just, you know, you can – you just – the I guess the feeling of, like, the demand is a little bit different because, yeah. again, the Colts expect to win. The Jaguars hope to win. Yeah. It's a different mindset. And so – Luckily, I, I came in 2017 when we, we made to the AFC Championship that year. So I was a part of that team that kind of turned over that new leaf and, and had some success. So it was fun winning there. It was one of the, the most fun I've had playing football, just being there and, and being a part of that uh, turnaround. And it was a lot of fun. And I got injured that year, so I had, had some adversity that I'd never faced before. And um, being in a new city away from family was di was difficult, but um, man, I wouldn't trade that for anything, you know. And then I played two more, uh, another season, and and then um, we didn't have as much success that year. But then then going to the Chargers, and again, they're not the San Diego Chargers no more, so the LA Chargers. Yeah. So a little bit different. Again, you know, a lot of history, but winning isn't you know consistent. Um, but great organization. They gave me an opportunity. Love those guys. Um, and they come in here to, to Nashville, to the Titans. Um, again, they're, I mean, we're five and zero right now. Everything's yeah. good when you're winning. It had a lot of success last year too, going to the AFC championship, but, um, you know, coach Vrabel and, and, uh, the GM Robinson over there, man, they're, they, they really got something good going on there. And there's a, the locker room environment is critical. You know, even though I'm on the practice squad and we could talk about the difference between practice squad and active roster, but, um, I can really sense that, I mean, it's a tight knit locker room. Uh, Vrabel comes from a, a rich, you know, a, his, his, uh, his football career is very successful with the Patriots, you know, winning Super Bowls yeah. as a player. And, and now as a coach, really, really, he's one of the top tier coaches right now, you know, he's on fire. And so really, but he's, he's implemented a lot of that Patriot type mindset here in, in, with the Titans. And, and it's, it's really cool to be a part of something like really structured, you know, guys work hard, they buy into the system, they believe. And again, winning helps. If you weren't winning, yeah. it's different, but he's proven to bring some success here, which is cool to be a part of. Well, and it's know. cool just living in the city of Nashville with all sports, but especially, you know, the Titans and the Preds, just watching the town come sure, alive yeah, for it. Yeah. And I don't know if it's that way in every big city, but I just feel the community involvement, you know, like yeah. the more that the, the team is coming together, the more the town's coming together for them. So it's fun to be on that side of it, no, watching it. It's a blessing it. being here, man. And I was, I, I moved down here. Well, I was here for the Stanley Cup finals when the Preds were in it. I mean, just... I mean, the city was on fire. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's, and it's, it's, Nashville is cool because it's a small market, right? It's not Chicago or New York or LA. And, and so you can still enjoy like the downtown vibe of yeah. a, of a season and, and you're walking to the stadium. You're not driving to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like having the accessibility and the, um, 
the ability to walk just over the bridge to the Nissan or, or right over, you know, to Bridgestone. I mean, it's, it's easy. And then you're right on Broadway, you know? So yeah. like the, the yeah. vibe is cool, man. And it is. It, it's really, it's really awesome to see, uh, um, you know, Nashville sports really, really. Well, and it's improving. cool. And I'm obviously biased to Nashville, but it's cool to see how the music intertwines with sports so well here you know like sure. you're right people will walk over the pedestrian bridge right into a bar to listen to a live band yeah you know it's so cool to see how all of that and even you know the the artists that you know and the people that you've met just from being here you yeah. know i love how everyone gets behind everyone and For that's sure. what i love about yeah, Nashville. Man, it's a great it's a great place to be and blessed to be here man yeah. yeah so talk about you were talking about the practice squad versus the the team explain that a little bit yeah, so I mean, if there's anything positive about COVID, man, I got to give it to COVID because if it wasn't for like the protocols that the NFL has has put in place, um, I really wouldn't be on the practice squad. Um, typically, a team only carries one long snapper on the on the roster, and so it's really if a guy gets hurt or is not doing well, that's where an opportunity kind of arises. So every time that I've been a free agent and I gotten picked up by a team, it's usually been due to injury. Um, so in this case, this year with, with, the with COVID and the protocol and all kinds of stuff, I mean, they're, they've, ex, ex, uh, they've expanded the practice squad roster. Um, they now allow veterans to be on the practice squad where before, if you, if you, um, like for me, I was never practice squad eligible because I'm a, I'm a veteran player. These are usually, um, practice squads usually for young guys that have less than like a year of experience. And so they, with the uh, expansion of the practice squad, you know, I knew that it would be an opportunity for me. And so, I mean, again, this year has been crazy for me because, um, you know, my wife and I, you know, we, we, we pray about, you know, football and, you know, I've, I've really, I've dove into my real estate business, which keep me really busy. And I, I love doing that. And we're expecting our first kid. We got married this year. So a lot has happened this year, but we always talked about like, what if football does happen? You know, cause I'm always training, I'm always staying in shape. And we always said, man, it'd be great to either be in Indianapolis at home or Nashville. Yeah. And the two teams that have brought me in has been the Colts and the Titans this year. And the Colts brought me in because, you know, I live right there. If something were to happen, I'm, I'm easy to, uh, to, to get to the facility. You know, I already have a lot of history with the team. Um, I work out with those guys. So I have that, that, uh, um, yeah just a relationship there already. But, uh, well, the, you know, when the Titans had their COVID outbreak, um, the long snapper got sick. And so they brought me in here because, Hey, if he's sick, he can't play. Yeah. And so even though he's asymptomatic, he still tested positive. And there's a, the, the mandated, um, uh, quarantine is like 13 days. So he was out for up almost two weeks. So they brought me down here and, um, and so I drove down here one night and I pretty much stayed here for about two weeks and tested every day because I have to pass my my COVID protocol. And, um, you know, they, they postponed a couple games and they pushed things back and more guys got sick. But anyway, so long story short, I mean, I was here for about two weeks and I couldn't even step foot inside the facility because they just kept pushing things back. And for a free agent, for in order for a team to sign a free agent now, they have to um, pass six consecutive days of negative tests. So, so I, I just, I honestly, I just woke up every morning, went to the facility, tested and just said prayed, your prayers. <laughs> just prayed that I was negative. Right. Cause I don't know, yeah. you know? And so passed my test, uh, six days, uh, Bo Brinkley, the snapper, he, by this time he was already off the COVID protocol. So he's back playing, but I think in their mind, because now that, uh, the rules are so strict that if, if, if Bo gets hurt, heaven forbid, or gets sick again, or there's another outbreak, it takes at least six days for them to bring somebody else in. So they just wanted to, they were like, this may be something that we want to do for the rest of the year, keep you here, practice, practice squad. But it also not just for the Titans, but for me, like this is a great opportunity because another team could come swoop, swoop me up if they need it. So, I mean, it's just great to be here. It's, it's a different role. It's, it's, it's crazy because, you know, I'm a nine year vet on practice squad. So my mindset is, is a little bit different. I wish I was out there practicing and whatnot, but uh, or out on the game field playing. But, you know, my role is unique in the sense that I can help these young guys and I can help this team from a different angle. And it's not necessarily being out there grinding every single day in practice and helping them with looks and stuff like that. But it's just really in the behind the scenes, just like being ready if if my name is called, you know. And so um, I get to work with the, you know, they kind of keep the practice squad guys in their own little bubble. And so I'm on a different schedule. But 
it's cool being on a team, man. And, and I love being here, living in Nashville now and, and um, being a part of a, a, a winning team. And it's exciting. You know, we have a big game this weekend against the Steelers, but it's just the the perspective is is cool, man. You know, it's it's like I said, my role is completely different, but uh, the goal is still to get on the field. So I'm doing whatever I can to stay ready, you know. Well, and that still, once again, like you're so humble about it and you're so willing to keep working, you know, like you're not the front man right now, but you're still ready when your time comes. Sure. And yeah. I think that persistency yeah. is what's what's helping you and has helped you get to where you are through this sure. whole thing, because you mentioned it a while ago, but you have your own real estate. You know, you're yep. you're selling real estate and yeah. doing everything you can yeah. on the side, which I think is crazy, you know. Yeah, so I'm doing that back in Indianapolis and I'm I got a team back there that now that I'm here in Nashville, I got a team back there that's helped me a lot. So they're helping, you know, with my clients back home and um it, it's cool, man. I, I again I get some I get a little bit more time with the practice squad. I'm I'm pretty flexible with my schedule during the day, so I can really I can be there on phone calls and doing emails and, and staying up on, on things, but you know, I gone we've we've sold three houses since i've been here and so it's cool yeah. that i could do that from afar but i'm lucky to have a team that's you know willing to step up and support me yeah. because when i when i got hired on um to my my brokerage down there in indianapolis uh they always knew that like football was still an aspiration for me so my team was like listen like if you ever get a call and it happened last year with the chargers if you ever get a call like just know that you know, whatever you got going on here, we'll, we'll step up and help you. That's awesome. And in this case is a little more long term, but man, my team is, I, I got great people helping me back in Indianapolis to keep my, my personal little business going and helping my clients because it's hard leaving clients behind and, or, or not feeling like I'm, I'm, I'm helping them like I should. Um, but everyone's been super supportive and, and it, it's been really cool, but you know, it's also it's also really cool to to share what I'm doing with other guys on the team. Like, listen, like, hey, real estate's a good little yeah. gig to get in, you know, or invest in. And well, and, and not to cut you off, but and in my opinion, you know, you already have following from playing sports, and that is social media is huge for businesses yeah. now. So yeah. being able to use that and you know, have people who supported you on the field now work with you in life to buy houses or whatever, you know, that, that's, that's a huge win. I no, it's like. cool. I've had a lot of people that, you know, a lot of Colts fans are, you know, reaching out for me to help. And, and, uh, yeah, definitely the little notoriety that I have back in Indianapolis, you know, definitely helps a little bit, you know, yeah. but it's still challenging, man. I, I guess I, I, I definitely had to humble myself a little bit because getting into the real estate business, you know, oh, I, I got connections, man, and people know my name, and I, I think I could be successful, and I, I've I've been successful, but it took me quite some time to really start getting yeah. rolling. Um, but I, I was able to really, I got licensed in October of last year, and it took me about six months to sell my first home, and so um, I learned a lot, and it was all that was all really meaningful time because I needed to learn the business and learn how to do contracts and how to, how to help people. But again, I was, I had to take a step back and I said, listen, like I, I need to be coachable. I need to learn. I need to do open houses every weekend when, <laughs> even on Sunday, you know, and, and sacrifice yeah. that time, but it's paid off, man. It's fun. And I'm still learning a lot and, and, and hope to get licensed down here in Tennessee so I can, I can work awesome. here too. Yeah. Well, and one thing I noticed too, that going back to, you know, you playing and a community person in general, I feel like you're very much involved with the players and the people in the community. I see that you spend a lot of time working with younger athletes mm -hmm. or at least motivating them. Like how is, how is that for you? I know, is that a priority for you to work with them and help build up the next generation of athletes? Like, yeah. is that a big, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, th I think I got the coach's blood in me because from my grandfather, yeah. You know, but I've always wanted to uh, be a part of football, even if I wasn't playing. And so I don't really quite know what, look, what that looked like, but I think I got a little glimpse of it with COVID, right? So yeah. my wife and I moved down here and spent about three months. You know, she got furloughed from her job. I wasn't working that t too much. And um, we got married in March. And so we, we postponed our honeymoon. So we just came down here and spent about three months. And so that's where, you know, Justin and I started training a little bit. And lo and behold, man, I, I got I got a lot of DMs and messages from these younger kids, like a kid from that's going to Vandy, uh, um, Tusculum, um, some of these local guys, Middle Tennessee, and some of these kids that are like in middle school and going into high school, reaching out like, hey, 
we live in Nashville. Can we come snap with you? And, and I'm like, sure. And so I have this little fourth grader, man. His, his name is Brady. And, uh, I mean, he's like the long snapping protege, man. He's, he, he loves it. He's really good for his age. I mean, he's better than I was in, 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 by far. And so he came out and we started working. Then another kid came out and then another kid came out. So I think for about two months, I had a steady group every Wednesday and Sunday. We'd get together up here at Rose Park and we'd snap. And these kids were as young as fourth grade and, and going in, going to, to Vandy. So um, I had about four or five guys consistently every week wow. that would drive. One guy drove like three hours to come out here and train. And they think that I helped them, but man, they helped me a ton. So I, I got, I had the passion of man, pouring into these kids, you know, mentoring them, helping them prepare for their season. And they helped me a lot. Cause I, now I got guys to snap to, you know, and, um, it's been cool. So I think definitely it's seeing, seeing the, uh, um, the joy that I got in doing that. I definitely want to do that more. I going to say help, coaching is going to be in the, your future. Yeah. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know if it means like going and just maybe doing like private sessions or actually coaching a team or, I don't know. We'll see what that looks like, you know, down the road. But I definitely want to be involved at in some capacity, yeah. help mentor the the next generation of long snappers, man. Yeah. So. Well, and for those younger generation athletes who are listening to the podcast today, yeah. what advice would you give them? You know, whether they're in high school or middle school, go or even college. You know, planning their career. And obviously, with sports, it's a dream that you have, and then you have to execute it. You know, to get there. What What advice would you give them, and what would you tell them to encourage them? I just you gotta put the work in, man. Yeah. I mean, you have to find a way. You have to sacrifice a lot. You know, especially with this with this crazy year that we've all experienced. You know, sports have been put on hold for a lot of people. But it's like, what are you what are you doing with that time? And that's what I was telling these young guys. I'm like, listen, there's not a lot of kids doing what you're doing right now. They're chilling, playing video games. They're chilling, doing whatever. They're not preparing because they they know, oh, season doesn't happen until next year or it's postponed. They're not putting that work in that you guys are. This is the stuff right here that's going to pay off in in the long run. And so I, I tell young guys all the time, you have to you have to. I don't know how you're going to get the motivation. A lot of people aren't self-motivated they have to find motivation from somewhere to get up every day and go do something that's productive um and these these kids are uh, a testament to that they you know they sacrifice either driving three hours to come train for just an hour or they take their sunday afternoon and come and come work and and uh it's gonna pay off because when that season does start you know i told them i said listen you may not be able to go to a gym right now because all the gyms are closed or your school's closed but you can definitely come in shape. You can run. You can go to a field and run. You can snap. You can do those things. And so if, if at anything, if you sh when you show up for the first day of practice, you better be in shape because yeah. it's gonna, you're going to be able to – the coaches are going to tell right off the bat who's been working who's not. And don't be the guy that hasn't been. So, uh, I mean, it really just you got to put the work in. you got to find a way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Matt, congrats on a huge year during the middle of a pandemic. I mean, <laughs> marriage, weird. a baby on oh, the man. way, you yeah. know, everything's happening for you. Thank yeah. you for hanging out today. No, thank you, man. It's and where can people, yeah. where can people find you? Um, if they're, you know, want to keep up with you and everything you're yeah, doing, just, uh, I mean, my handle is at Matt Overton underscore LS as a long snapper, um, Instagram, Twitter, that kind of stuff. Okay. So it's, it's. Yeah, man, I guess I'm pretty easy to find. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, thanks again for letting us crash your house today oh, and hanging man, out. You did. You did. You, your whole crew came. That's cool. And, then, and I loved hearing your story, and I think people will too. So nah, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, man. Thank All you. Right.